Believe it or not, the midterm season, well, for the elections, it begins in earnest tomorrow. Big battles right now. And it's fascinating within the GOP circles because it kind of tells us a little bit where the party is right now and really what kind of sway the Tea Party has. Biggest primary on the calendar tomorrow is in North Carolina where State Senate President Tom Tillis, he's backed by much of the GOP establishment. He's going against a well-heeled uh, Tea Party candidates as well as four others in a huge primary. It's a key test for the viability of the Tea Party because the winner will take on this person, Democratic Senator Kay Hagan, seen as one of uh, more than a few vulnerable Democrats this season, unless the Republican nominee is seen as so conservative they can't get elected, something we have seen in about a dozen Senate races going back to 2010. Now, North Carolina is just the first in a series of key Senate pr primaries that are being watched closely this month. Voters in eight states are going to pick the nominees between now and Memorial Day. And right now, in each state, you got Tea Party Republican versus established GOP here, and polls all have these establishment candidates ahead. And Jeannie, does that tell us something that the Tea Party thing was a fad that's gone, or is the Tea Party dialed down the act a little bit since they want to be inside the tent rather than outside? I don't know that the Tea Party has dialed back. I think the GOP establishment has said, look at we really want to take the Senate, and if we're going to take the Senate, we can't make the mistakes that we made in 2012 and 2010 by nominating people who simply can't win statewide. So I think you see <clears throat> the GOP really, really desperate to win the Senate, and they're, they're fighting hard for it. But I don't think the Tea Party has backed down at all. Um, you know, it, they will fight hard, and they do have some support in some of these states, but I think the establishment has said we're going to put the money behind candidates who can win. And usually, historically, Republicans have done a better job on that than Democrats, but not of late. Tom, you think it's that the electorate has said, all right, you know, I tried the tea, I didn't like it, or it's that the GOP establishment finally said, I'm not going to live in fear of these guys anymore. You know what? A, a, a little bit of both. I'm glad that you put it that way. Um, I think that the mainstream GOP has had enough of uh, frankly, I'm not calling all the Tea Party folks, but frankly, they've had enough of some of these screwballs. And, you know, if you continue to go over the cliff with them, you're going to end up at the bottom of that cliff. We saw the Speaker of the House realize that, in which he ultimately had to stand up to those uh, that, that were pulling him in ways. I going mean, he, literally over fiscal cliffs. Literally. Yeah. He couldn't even control and, his own caucus. I, just, I was just going to say, because, Dominic, you look at the Pew poll that's out today, and you see Republicans have a real shot of taking. Oh, this thing. And the, yes. what's going to hurt them is if they hurt themselves. So, yes. so I think you but see we have to said this that, point. We've said that for the last two or three election mm -hmm. cycles, and they still hadn't gotten the point yeah. in this. This time may or may not be different. Now, Andrew, who will be at the top of the ticket in 2016 is a different uh, issue, but it also speaks to the same question, who is the Republican Party? And maybe we got to go to the Kentucky Derby to find that out, as we saw on Saturday. And I'm not talking about the horse racing, the political horse race, uh, going full gallop here. A senator and likely 2016 White House candidate was spotted entertaining Rupert Murdoch. Yes, I am talking about Rand Paul. And the head of Fox and Fox News were quite chummy there. Paul uh, looking to make himself palatable to mainstream Republicans as the election approaches. And there's a push uh, Time spoke about today here, complete with that photo and a political play-by-play. -play. But if Rand Paul is really going to be a legitimate candidate, it's more conceivable now than it was before Christie had his problems. He's going to have to overcome some really tough positions, as well as also quotes that he's had along the way, like his opposition to the Civil Rights Act. I'm not talking about back in 1920 he said this. He said this a year or two ago. Also, his publicly stated belief that businesses should be able to serve or not serve anyone they want, regardless of race or whatever else, quote, supporting racist Nevada uh, rancher Clive Bundy before Bundy's racism became a page one story, or his belief that mountaintop removal mining is actually good for local property values, or that he considers abortion to be a form of contraception. And there's more, Andrew. Yeah, it's interesting because in, just a moment ago we were talking about electability as a key factor in Republican primaries. You would think that electability would be a bit of a difficulty when it comes to Rand Paul, given his history on some of these issues. I think there's a difference when you talk about the presidential race, and, and I think a lot of Republican voters in primaries want the, the, the GOP, the conservative doctrine, to come through. I think he does have a legitimate chance at the Republican nomination. He might be the strongest conservative Republican or more conservative Republican who's out there right now. And if he gets you know, if this dance with Rupert Murdoch pays dividends and they can actually get some, some positive spin on Fox News, 
he may be a very valid force to deal with in but, the run-up to 2016. But you 2016. can fight the idea of Obamacare and come up with your own fuzzy math or whatever, and you're going to... But the minute you say, as he has, that he believes that any owner of any business in this country can decide who to employ regardless of color, creed, gender, or whatever else, or even serve, how is that remotely a rational position in 2014 America. I don't, I don't let alone 2016, I, I don't get um, how that's seen as something the Republican Party would ever tolerate to get through a primary that would kill the whole party in 2016 with top of the ticket. You're absolutely right. He has taken some positions that are going to require him to explain. But by the same token, we cannot forget, this is a guy who has made some very smart political moves. I mean, you and I have argued about this before. He is a guy who is seen, if you go to college campuses, speaking of college campuses, he and his father are incredibly popular mm -hmm. because they have these libertarian, they have this libertarian strain, they have this isolationist strain, their focus is on America. It is a very different Republican Party. I think we are ill-served to categorize him as a traditional okay. conservative you Republican. Okay, everything you say is 100% true. Oh, thank you, But Richard. here's my problem. <laughs> libertarian sounds good, except when you apply it the full way through. Absolutely. He would have let us go over the financial cliff. Absolutely. He would have let us, when we were in 08, he would have let, you know, he wouldn't have done any bailout here in the economy, literally would have gone over the cliff yet again back then. Absolutely. I mean, you, people, once they learn a little bit more than just the first two lines, they say time out. Yeah, and I do think he is still too uh, far off the mainstream to get the establishment Republican support for 2016. That said, he's a guy who is smart. He can adjust. This guy has what it takes to maybe in 2020, 2024, play more than people think right now. He starts to walk back the bad stuff. And yeah, the and he's that. done that already. Absolutely. 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 I don't I know how you disagree. walk it back. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Do you, what about 2020, 2024? Well, maybe 2030, we'll 2036. Be dead, Tom <laughs> yes. 2050, 2055. <laughs> Richard, can you imagine the Democratic ads against Rand Paul? Can you imagine the ads? Can you imagine the ads with Hillary run against him? All you have to do Donald. is pull the commencement, not the commencement, hey. when he went to Howard, you, know, you mentioned the yeah. Yeah, the sure. Play the Howard University address, the way he was talking down to those students. Just play that it's for America right, to Dominic, see. We won't be able to have lunch anymore, <laughs> you and me. All right. That's right. That's right. When we come back, uh, Andrew's uh, favorite night in Washington, we call it Nerd Prom. A look at Washington's lighter side. A look at the highlights from a pretty funny White House Correspondents Dinner when we come back.